All right, well today we are diving back into the car hauler bus rebuild. This thing has not been driven in months because we've had it torn apart and we've been working on it. It's the perfect time to work on it because it's the off season, but we've still got a long way to go. We still got a lot of work to do, so we need to get to it. As I mentioned, this thing is still pretty torn apart at the moment. If you look in the garage area here, we still got all the old electronics and some of the trim pieces, our fluid cabinet, there's kind of stuff everywhere. Back here and up here, we still got this <laughs> pretty well torn apart. So we've got a lot of work to do both inside the bus, outside the bus, and underneath the bus. So before we start working on it though, I want to get this thing moved over by the shop. And as I mentioned, it is not driven in months, so <laughs> hopefully it still runs, hopefully it still drives. All right guys, before we get too deep into today's video, I wanted to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Factor. So I'm very passionate about Factor because it has literally revolutionized the way I eat. It has saved me time, it has saved me money, it has saved me headache and hassle. It has, it has done so much for me. I mean, it has really contributed to me getting more work done in the shop because I have more time, you know? With the, the food triangle, it's like, it's like with cars. There's an old saying that cheap, fast, reliable, pick two, right? If it's cheap and fast, not reliable. If it's cheap and reliable, it's not fast, so on and so forth. So food, it's kind of the same thing. It's, you can have cheap, quality, and fast. It, you, you're not going to get all three. If it's cheap and it's quality, it's going to take some serious time. If it's cheap and fast, it's not going to be good quality. And I have never been able to get all three until I found Factor and it was like, it was like the solution I've been looking for the whole time. I get fresh, never frozen meals delivered right to my door that are ready in two minutes. Two minutes flat. I mean, there's really nothing I can make in two minutes, let alone a solid, really good quality meal. I mean, restaurant quality food that is absolutely delicious. They've got a ton of recipes. I've liked all of them. I mean, they, I don't know how they do it, but they have done such a great job curating these different meals. But the, the schedule is flexible, which is nice for me because sometimes I go out of town for a week to go to an event and I can just skip the week or dial back the meals for the week. I don't have to worry about having food that I'm not going to eat, which is a big factor with going to the grocery store. It just, it ticks all the boxes. It really does. And it saves me so much time and so much stress, not having to worry about what I'm going to eat. And oh, I got to finish early before this place closes or I didn't go to the grocery store, I'm missing this ingredient. It's, it's so nice. It's just amazing. So uh, I would highly recommend it. So that being said, if you are interested in trying it out for yourself, head to factor75.com or click the link down below and use code TaylorJust50 to get 50% off your first Factor box as well as free wellness shots for life. Two shots from three available flavors in every order as long as you have an active subscription. It is a great deal to, to try it out and uh, just see them firsthand. Don't take it from me. Try it out yourself, see what you think. So that being said, as always, we got a lot of work to do, not a lot of time to do it, and we need to get back to it. So let's get into it. All right, uh, let's see if this thing still starts. Every time. <laughs> so satisfying. That is one thing about this thing is it may be complicated in the sense that it has a lot of systems and there's a lot of systems that can fail, but it's also very simple compared to, you know, some of these modern trucks we're used to. So anyway, let this thing warm up and build air pressure. Ah, this white strip has officially given up. This was a temporary fix since some of our gauge lights weren't working. We've got a lot to do. Let's get it moved first. <laughs>
All right, well, that wasn't so bad. Got the bus moved. Every time I drive this thing, I fall back in love with it. Not that I ever fell out of love with it, but when it's just sitting there, it's just a big old bus taking up space. When you drive it, you're like, man, this thing's so good. I love this thing. I can't wait to get it dialed. So, uh, yeah, bus is in place. Now we can work on it right by the shop. Not have to walk super far to get to our tools and have concrete because we need to crawl around under this thing. Ooh, something's leaking. What is that? I think it's just water. Where are you coming from? Oh, I think it's just water that was in this cabinet. It's one of the uh, many projects that we need to tackle is uh, fixing these, resealing these so that they actually seal. So our first upgrade is going to be the batteries across the board. We replaced these two not too long ago, but these two are still bad and need to be replaced. The cranking batteries are all right, but we're just gonna go through and redo the entire battery and electrical system as far as the batteries is concerned because it's kind of messy. There's a lot of sloppy cable work everywhere. We're gonna clean all this up, just make this all a lot nicer and a lot fresher because batteries are something you can't get anywhere without. So let me show you what I've got for this thing. Whew, we got a lot of stuff. batteries are absolute <laughs> monsters. All right, so here is what we've got, an entire table full of batteries. That is what it takes to power one of these buses. You need a lot of batteries. So these four over here, these D7500s, these are the house batteries. So these are gonna control things like the 12 volt lighting, the winches, and even the lift gate is powered off of the house battery 12 volt system. So it's, a, it's an important system. There's a lot that's getting drawn off of that. Now the other half of the batteries are for the engine side of things. So we've got two D3100s for cranking the engine as well as a D6500. This is replacing the three batteries that are in there currently. And then this super capacitor as well. So this basically stores electrical current and then is able to supply it in high current applications like a starter cranking over an 11 liter diesel engine. So uh, we should have all the oomph we need to start this big engine. Now, the neat thing here is that not only are we going from a lead acid battery to an AGM uh, parts store battery to a high quality excess battery, but these while having more capacity and more power than the batteries that are in there are significantly smaller. Both the house batteries and the starting batteries are way smaller than the batteries that are currently in there, but actually produce more power. So we're gonna get a bit more power than we have currently while saving space, which more space means more storage. So this will be a really nice upgrade, but it is gonna be a lot of work because we've gotta build a new box, we've gotta redo all the wiring. So we should be able to clean everything up dramatically, make it a lot nicer and have a fresh electrical system. But that being said, it is gonna be a bit of work and the battery system is not the only thing we're working on. We've got a lot of other stuff to do, so we need to get into it. Oh, I stand corrected. So I thought all four of these were eight, um, but two are eight, two are four. So we're actually gonna have significantly more capacity with those four 7500s than we did with these four eights and fours uh, while taking up the space is two eights. Why? There's our four batteries. 
There's all the cables that were interconnecting them, which we should be able to trim up a lot. We can only do reserve capacity because you can't find the amp power ratings on these. Um, but 325 for each of the eights. Our new batteries are 375, I think, and then 240. So 1130 for these four versus 1500 for the new four. Seems like there's so much going on until you start peeling away the layers of the onion. You know, with all these batteries out and all of these cables that were just connecting the batteries together out, there's not a whole lot of wires. Alright, so these are all of our old battery hold downs. Got a lot of them. Alright, I don't even know if I want to call them hold downs. Hold in placers. This is part of our generator compartment battery box. You can see it's crumbling apart. And then this was our battery box right in here. It's crazy how much more room we have in this compartment with that box and those wires out of the way. So we need to get this cleaned up. I mean, we're not, we shouldn't have to put any batteries in here. It's part of the idea of doing this upgrade and getting significantly more power uh, in a smaller package. Because we should, we should be able to fit all of them in there, all four. But I want to get that area cleaned up so I don't put my fresh batteries on some nasty corrosion goop that is pretty much everywhere. It's absolutely mind-blowing seeing these side by side. <laughs> it's just, it really puts it in perspective. You can tell these are way smaller, but when you see them next to these monstrosities, it's like, it's wild to think that these four batteries have more power and capacity than these four. It, more capacity even if we had two more of these, and four of these take up less space than two of these. They are a little bit taller, but for our purposes, uh, that doesn't matter. We got plenty of, plenty of height. We don't have a height issue. We just have a four space issue, and those require a lot of four space. These, not so much. Ugh. Look at that, what a nice sight. It's starting to rain. Why, Florida? So in true Florida fashion, it started to rain on us and we had to call it a night and get back into it the next morning. So one of the first things we need to do is get this automatic transfer switch box moved. So what this basically does is it takes shore power and generator power and then it automatically switches between them so you can be plugged into shore power, have everything going and then fire the generator up and once it's ready, it'll take over and you can unplug without having to turn anything off. But this was added after the fact, and it, the most of the factory wiring that was there and done when this thing was originally built is in really nice shape. It's just a lot of this stuff that was done as an afterthought that is not done so great. So once we got the wiring out of the way, we can work on getting this ugly, beat up, crusty, rotten box out of here. I am so excited to get this box out of, out of the bus's life. This thing, this whole cabinet has bugged me from the first day I looked in here. It is just an absolute mess of chaos. The box is falling apart, the screws are all mismatched, so it was a nice feeling to throw this thing in the trash can and know I'm never gonna have to deal with it again. So once we got it out and out of the way and we have way more room now, we can get this cleaned up and then we need to start planning and plotting where to mount everything. So I decided to mount this transfer box on the wall here. So it's nice and secured, it's accessible, but it's not in the way because we don't want any of this stuff to be in the way or in harm's way, but we also need it to be accessible. So it's a big improvement from it just being mounted to some four x four sitting on top of the battery box. So with that done, I started trying to sort out the wiring, some of which I could see where it went and what it was for, but other parts of it, I really wasn't sure. So I had to crawl in there and try to trace this stuff back, but it's not as easy as I thought. All right, you know what? 
Let's see if we can get in from the other counter. There's a partitioning board there, but I think if we take that out, we can get to the back side. I was about to just start mounting the batteries, but I really want to know what each of these things are and where they go uh, for the future reference before we tie it all together. So uh, we kind of need this opening, but I'm pretty happy with how those came out. Not too bad. Better than I'm on freaking 4x4s. All right, let's go to the other side, see if we can get in here. All right, well, that's helpful. You guys need to get out of the way, dude. Move. Why you guys stand so close? Nope. Oh, it says a bunch of numbers written on it. Let's say cycled at 16 minutes. I don't know. This is shoved in there. I'm gonna shove it back in there. All right. Well, I dug around a little bit, and uh, oh man, I'm not doing a good job of this. This paper's old. Uh, overall, I mean, I'm uh, I I think I've got a pretty good mental map now of where everything goes. Some of these wires are just disappearing into the oblivion back here that you can't really see because the generator's in the way. They might go to nothing, you know? There are some wires like that that are hooked to nothing. The more I dig into this thing, the more it seems less elaborate. Like, I mean, there's a lot of systems, but it's all pretty straightforward, so. All right, it's time to get these, well, it's time to get these batteries mounted now that we know what everything is and that everything that is there is actually uh, needed. I just didn't want to wire something up that wasn't, you know, was uh, obsolete. So to mount these new batteries, we've basically got to determine exactly where we want them, take some measurements, and then figure out how exactly we want to secure them. How secure do we want to go? Do we want to take it super simple or uh, like the, they were before or go with something a little more elaborate? And if you know me, you know I'm all for a little more elaborate. I want, I want things to last. I don't want to do something and then later I've got to do it again. So I had this inch and a half by inch and a half angle. So I thought this would be nice and tall to be able to give them kind of a good height perimeter to keep them nicely in place. And we're gonna go basically all the way around. We're not doing a full frame box, so that way it's serviceable, but they're basically gonna be covered on all sides and hopefully held in place really well. So fortunately, my material was just long enough to get all the pieces I wanted. If we had a little bit more, I might have gone the extra mile and done a welded three quarter perimeter with a front plate, but this will work really well and we'll, it's, it's a huge improvement from what was in there. So with all our pieces cut, we could get all of our holes drilled and get them marked out so that they're even. These holes aren't super critical on the side pieces because they just kind of, it's just kind of rough spacing. So once we get the holes drilled, I went ahead and deburred all the holes. This is something I just, it, it's like compulsory at this point. I can't not do it because you end up with these little straggler pieces and it, it just drives me crazy. So once we had the holes drilled, once we had them deburred and cleaned up, it's time to throw a quick coat of paint on these, which is another huge step up from the ones that were in there that were just leaching rust everywhere. These will be nice and protected. They won't rust and they won't get rust all over the cabinet. So quick coat of flat black spray paint and then we are ready to try and install these. Now we're gonna need the batteries in here to mock this up because the idea is to have these fit as tight as humanly possible. We want these to almost be squishing the batteries but still not be squishing them so much that we can't get them in and out. We want it to be serviceable but we want it to be held in there nice and snug we don't want these batteries flopping around or banging into each other or going anywhere so with them in place we can mount our brackets all right well fit nice and snug and unfortunately i have to pull them all back out so that we can put these last few screws in but uh they're solidly in there All right, batteries are in. Dang, someone's ripping, you hear that? Oh, they just got out of it. Uh, batteries are all in. Very, very happy with that. They're super solid in here. I mean, they're not going anywhere. We've got room kind of on all sides to access things and, and run things. I'm very pleased with that compared to the old setup. You know, not having that up top on some 
four by fours, you know, is a much, much cleaner, especially once we wire it. But uh, we still have one more task to do. I don't think there's any way these are jumping up out of there, but for peace of mind, we need to make a strap that holds each pair down. I thought about doing one in the middle, but just a little too close to the positive terminal for comfort. Don't want these things shorten out. So we'll do one, two. I got my measurements, we'll whip out the flat bar and get to it. My neighbor, basically across the way there, it's his birthday and he's got a live band going. <laughs> I really wanted to go over there and uh, join in the festivities and hang out, but uh, got too much work to do. That's how it goes. Well, unfortunately, I only have enough material for one of these. So I'm gonna do a middle hold down, which is kind of what I wanted to do. Um, I'm just gonna flip the batteries around so that it is the grounds on the middle. So if they were to bounce around it, what were to contact the terminals, it would just be grounding it, which it's already grounded. So it's not a big deal. Changes up my wiring plan, but that's okay. So after test fitting the strap, I wasn't super happy with how it fit. I had an idea I wanted to try of basically offsetting the legs so that the strap would sit down on the frame that's holding the batteries in, if that makes sense, so that way it wouldn't have to bow out any. So I decided to cut it apart and tack them on and try it out and just see what it looked like and what happened, and it, it would work. But it wasn't ideal, you know, the goal of this thing is to squish the batteries down and make sure they don't move and doing it that way, it's it's not holding against the batteries, it's holding against the frame. So I decided to revert back to plan A, cut them again, cut my tacks, and then just weld them back together and make it a little bit shorter in the process so that way it would hold down nice and snug. It's, it's important with these kind of straps that they're pretty much spot on. If they're too tall, it's gonna you're not gonna get it to bolt all the way down. But if it's too short, it's not gonna do its job. So we got it pretty much exactly where we wanted and then we could go ahead and drill our holes and start grinding in our notches. Now, there's plenty of room between the terminal spots on the batteries, but I thought I'd give ourselves a little bit of safety margin and grind in these notches to allow for them to kind of go around where those terminal posts are and give us even that much more space without sacrificing much of the strength and the hold down capability of this tie down because it's got to hold not just a pair of batteries but four batteries. So once we got the notches ground down and cleaned up we can try this thing one more time. Alright, final test fit. Fort paint. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Mint conditions. Sick. <laughs> Solid. All right, cool. Just gonna throw a coat of paint on it. Um, but we're good. All right, before we install this strap, we need to flip these batteries around. These uh, self-tappers aren't gripping so good since we've installed them several times. So we're gonna convert these to rib nuts um, because these are the ones you're gonna be taking in and out on a regular basis. So it'd be good to have a setup with better ability to take apart and put back together many times. Yeah, you gotta have a 
have a good feel for it. piece of the puzzle is our strap and then we can start wiring these things. It's trying to start raining again but these I ain't going nowhere you gotta say it I ain't going anywhere all right I'm really happy with that I'm glad we took the extra time to do this strap I was gonna try to be lazy and you know these will hold it in but no, I don't have to worry about it they're solid I added some rubber so we're not chafing the battery casing now we're gonna start working on the wiring which again my plan was to have all the positives in the middle and just link them together real tight um, but we'll just be doing that with the grounds this time. So when it comes to wiring in a battery bank like this, something I like to try to do is spread the load out across the batteries. So the easiest way to do this would be to use these excess terminal blocks, tie all the batteries together, and then have everything coming from those individual batteries. But then it's gonna draw those batteries down first instead of taking as much power as easily from the other batteries. So we're basically trying to spread out all the different aspects of the system to the different batteries and spread the power and ground out across the bank too so that everything has to draw from but all the batteries at the same time. That's the ideal scenario is that we're kind of pulling from all four at the same time. So I got the terminal blocks on. I started getting some of these old wires cut down and trimmed to shape. I was trying to avoid crimping terminal ends on because I have a really limited selection of terminal ends. And as much as it pained me to reuse some of these old ones on these fresh batteries, we kind of had to do what we had to do here. We're gonna have to come back in here and make some small changes later on, and uh, I'll make sure to order enough terminal ends to redo these if I'm so inclined, but most of these were well crimped, well soldered, and well put together, so we just cleaned them up, cut the wires down a little bit shorter, and then used them on this setup. That wind. All right, I think that's it though. All the battery cables are hooked up. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, well, it is complete. I've got to tidy up a couple little things, uh, like this terminal cover, we need to get some boots for these. I do still need to add a kill switch. Uh, I thought I had one lying around, but I must use it on a different project. So I've got one on order. Uh, we can add that in and then we're done. But for the most part, <laughs> it's pretty well wrapped up. And uh, I gotta say, I'm really happy with the end result from the bracket and you know how solid everything is to the cable management, everything came out better than I could have hoped. We've got more room in here, more accessibility. These are all mounted. I mean, just take a look at how much wire we got rid of just by basically not having the battery so far apart. This is all wire that was literally just there to connect the batteries together. Current has to travel a lot less to get between the batteries, and we've gained back a ton of space, not only in here, but in here. I mean, this is how it was before, and now this can go in the garbage along with that and we have this entire cabinet to ourselves what a nice feeling man that was uh it was definitely tedious and time consuming but that's a very satisfying one so that being said it's time to move on <laughs> there's been a lot of time on these batteries so <laughs> the question is what do we move on to i finally got something i've been waiting on this cord has been surprisingly very hard to get <laughs> Uh, and I was about to cancel it and just go buy the material at Lowe's and build my own, but uh, then it finally, finally shipped, and here it is. Now we finally have a second cord. So with this, we should be able to plug our shore power in from over there, which means we can work on the bus on concrete, but also have power to run the ACs and have outlets and all that good stuff. So that's going to be a huge improvement. That being said, I was going to go ahead and knock out this battery upgrade. For the starting batteries i did just check these are both fours the smaller ones what's crazy is our new ones have 250 more cranking amps each 
um, and they're much smaller. Same story as up there. But to do these, our third battery is tucked right in there, which means we've got to flip this thing around so that we can get the back open, drop the lift gate down, and open up the engine compartment. So I'm kind of batteried out at the moment. I want to take a break from batteries and dive back into the inside and work on finishing that up because it's bothering me and I want to get it done. And it gives us an excuse to test out our new cord and see if that works like I'm hoping it will. So let's get this thing plugged in and uh, get to work. Now obviously we're not gonna be able to use all 50 amps because we've doubled the length of our cord. But we should be able to use, well, we should have plenty for what we're doing. As far as I can tell, everything in here is working just like it should. We've got all of our shop lights, 12 volt and 120 volt, all that's working good. So I'm gonna start finishing this project. Basically we put a smart TV in here and we got rid of a lot of electronics. We did keep this VHS DVD player, kept our amp set up. We got it all functionally working, just aesthetically. It needs some finishing touches. This piece here, however, the problem is the new TV is a little bit taller and this does not work anymore. It doesn't fit. So I'm gonna try to modify our trim piece, restretch and restaple this cover and uh, put it back in. Hopefully it works. Let's give it a shot. So my buddy Josue and I have always joked that we need badges for learning different skill sets and disciplines. Like you could have a TIG welding badge and a plasma cutting badge and a tuning badge. And you know, when you learn it, you learn that new discipline, you get the badge. And one of those badges that I never thought I would need to get was an upholstery badge. Just not something that ever interested me. But if I want to get this bus retrofitted and have all these upgrades and still make it look like it was meant to be there and nothing happened we're gonna have to get that upholstery badge after all so <laughs> sway actually bought this stapler so we could tackle this project a while ago and uh it's time to finally put it to use so i cut a lip off and it wasn't quite enough so i decided to cut a little bit more i was able to use the jigsaw this time which is a little bit more precise and accurate and then test fit this again and see if we've got it close enough to hopefully make this work all right i think that's gonna work yeah that should be good So after getting our piece cut to shape, which is a, uh, it's a badge we already have. We didn't need to get that badge. It's time to take the test for the upholstery badge. So I cut away some of this excess foam and then just went to it. I tried to pull it as tight as I could in some of the main areas, get it stretched, get a couple staples in it, and then just go to, to Staple Town. <laughs> I, you know, you can never have too many staples. So this project really did bring me back to my construction days doing commercial awnings where I would have to stretch the fabric covers over standard awnings and screw them in with tech screws. It's it's uh, pretty similar. So I guess I, I had somewhat of a badge, but we got the official upholstery badge and then we can finally put this thing back in. I cannot tell you how excited I am to finally have this piece back in there, coming in the bus and seeing this set up every time and feeling the reward of the new TV and seeing it, but knowing it's unfinished, drove me nuts. Glad to have it done. All right, well, I need to update the hardware. <laughs> the washers kind of stick out like a sore thumb at the moment, but I didn't want the screws to rip through. Let's see if the TV still works. I can't remember what the source is. I need to relabel this. Oh yeah, this still works. I'm just so happy with this setup, especially now that we've got it tidied up. Got audio coming out of these speakers, as well as those speakers that you can't really hear because they're over the top of this, but basically surround sound. In the bus. That's so cool. And it looks all complete now, except for this. We still gotta tidy up this. We got our little charging port in here. Make this look a little more complete. They did a good job with all the labels in here and I'm gonna try to carry carry the torch because uh, it is tested a couple times and upgraded. So what we have so crazy to watch my own drift video in the bus. All right, moving on. All right, so we have. I thought I had it here. Maybe it's in the back. I found it. 
I got this little net, silicone net for covering up that cabinet. Ideally, this will kind of keep everything in place. Completing the look. Let's see how it fits. It doesn't really look like I was hoping it would. So I think we're gonna go with option two. And try to make this acrylic panel wherever I put that. Yeah, this will be good. I like this idea. Meant. All right, well, our TV area is officially wrapped up. I'm really happy to have that project done. It was bugging me knowing that it still needed to be done. Now we still have to tackle the driving infotainment project. We're gonna put a head unit here with CarPlay and we're probably gonna convert this into a sub box because this drawer does not like to stay closed anyway. It's really annoying when you're driving and you turn and it opens. Obviously we could fix that. Or we could turn it into a sub box. Seems like a better option to me. So uh, this is pretty well tidied up uh, for the most part. So I wanna move back to the back back here. I need to clear out these electronics and all these cables. This is all what we were able to remove by switching from this old stuff to a smart TV. It's kind of a mess back here. So let's, uh, let's get this wrapped up. We found these old time slips last time and uh, I think we'll just leave them stashed away in here. This one was basically in the overhead area and then this TV folds down. But I'm thinking, what if I open this case up and put a tablet in here? Is that dumb? Tell me if it's dumb. I'm not a hoarder, but sometimes I have a hard time throwing things away like this, this kind of stuff. That's why I'm not throwing away my 100 disc changer. You never know when you're gonna all right well the garage is cleaned up and put back together pretty happy about that that was bugging me having all that stuff everywhere uh having this back in even though we might have to take it out to run some wires for some lights over here it's one of the projects i want to tackle but we're pretty well put back together, at least from where we were. <laughs> the only thing left apart is up here. Got a whole plan for here. Gotta decide what to do up here. That's why I saved that thing for now, just because I'm not 100% sure what I want to do to fill this in. We've got a lot of empty holes because we consolidated all of our electronics between the TV and those two. So I don't know what to put here, if, if anything, if we should just fill it, if we should build a new one of these that'd be a lot of work let me know in the comments uh which way you would go but we still got some fun stuff up there with basically the driving sound system and car play and things just to make this thing a little more modern a little bit nicer for long trips that being said i am so excited to drive this thing again uh really all that it needs to be ready to go to an event again is we got to fix the generator so we're gonna have to pull that out i mean to try to fix it ourselves or take it somewhere but that has to get sorted. We need the generator. And we gotta secure the power steering lines. They're still kind of rough routed down through the middle here because we need to get the bus up on blocks to get under there and route them and secure them. So a couple little things to do before we can drive this thing, but it's pretty well good to go. Man, I am so excited to drive this thing again. Like I love this bus. I know it's unconventional. I know it's not everybody's choice, but it's just cool, man. You know, like I haven't really talked about it, but this is, kind of always been a dream of mine to do 
like a three month long, six month long drift road trip, traveling around the country, basically a crazy long road trip experience in all of the US and hitting a bunch of drift events. And this is the perfect vehicle to do that in. I've wanted to do this really since I started YouTube, but I thought it'd be, you know, in a van, you know, converted van, build a van and tow an enclosed trailer or something. This is, this is a way better setup. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're already ahead of the game, but we just got to work through the little bugs, get this thing dialed and finish retrofitting it just to make it a better experience, both on the road and when we're parked up, you know, somewhere at the track or at a campground and uh, we'll be good to go. But otherwise, man, this thing is, I really like this bus. I've really been enjoying this project, but my parts didn't come in for the front stuff, for the radio and all that. So uh, we are out of time, unfortunately. But that being said, more work to do on the bus. I can't wait to see you guys for it, but for now we're out of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. But I do wanna say thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for liking the video, commenting, giving me your suggestions. Thanks for all of it. Uh, I really appreciate it and uh, can't wait to see you next time. Goodbye.